Hello and welcome back to the Dividend Experiment. My favourite, and possibly also your favourite kind of video coming up, the 3 month update video. As mentioned in the 9 month update, we'll be taking regular 3 month snapshots of the portfolio instead of the 6 months that I had originally planned. This was decided by subscribers and I think it's better too. In these videos I'll do a summary and update on how the stocks in the portfolio are performing. I will also let you know my thoughts on the future of the stocks, any interesting news and if I'm going to sell anything or have sold anything in the time between the last update video. This is the third update video so far. There's been a year's worth of portfolio building and I have added 12 stocks so far since the channel began in May 2018. For all of the newest subscribers or anyone who hasn't been with the channel since the beginning, here's what we have so far. So in May, I added AT&T. In June, I added Barrett Developments PLC. In July, I added Daimler. In August, I added National Grid PLC. In September, I added Las Vegas Sands, which I then doubled up on to celebrate six months of the experiment, which explains its heavier weighting. In October, I added General Mills. In November, I added Imperial Brands. In December, I added Royal Dutch Shell PLC. And in January, I added International Paper. In February, I added TUI Group. In March, I added BAE Systems PLC. And in April, which you may have seen in the most recent video, I added PacWest Bancorp. It all looks pretty cool and it's laid out like this. Just by reading through this list, I can already tell this is going to be a long video. Well, for my usual standards at least. So I'm going to try out using the timestamps in the description. So if you only want to pay attention to certain parts of the video, or are only interested in a particular company, you can just select the timestamp that you want. So let's take a look at the significant updates for the companies. Okay, starting with AT&T. Still liking this one a lot, and would buy more if I had the extra capital from somewhere. Since the last video, they still have the same massive debt problems and spectators and critics are still worried about their ability to pay their dividend. Some are even going as far to say that they should cut it. On the upside, they have sold their share of Hulu, which could give them a little bit to pay off the debt. It is only $1.43 billion compared to the debt of an eye-watering $180 billion, however, but every little helps. AT&T already have HBO and their own streaming service from its acquisition of Time Warner, so still having Hulu doesn't seem necessary on top of all this. All in all, AT&T is a high yielding stock, but for a good reason, as it's always going to come with the risk of a cut due to that high debt burden. Barrett Developments Barrett Developments, along with other house builders, have been up and down since I bought it. And one of the main reasons for this volatility is due to Brexit and the issues that will arise in the housing markets because of this. If you are familiar with Brexit news, then you'll know that Brexit has been delayed, which means uncertainty for a while yet, but has moved the share price of BDEV a little higher. Daimler. Some big news with Daimler and Mercedes-Benz and some decent sized moves in the share price to accompany them. Mercedes have opened a production plant in Moscow, Russia. It's not very usual for foreign companies to invest in Russia, and the automobile market there is just starting to pick up after a slump in the early 2010s. This plant is projected to produce 25,000 cars a year, and should be good news for the company. Daimler are also upping their investment into electric vehicles, which is good as developments in this area are one of the main reasons I chose this company to invest in. They aim to have a new electric SUV range by 2021. It will be called the Mercedes EQB. More good news is that demand for the luxury Maybach range is big in China, with 600 sold each month. This is a big deal as in China there's a downward trend for automobile purchases overall. So Daimler is doing well in this market. And with China set to reduce taxes on automobiles, it could even get better from here. There will also be some cooperation between BMW and Daimler alongside a self-driving startup called Aurora to help accelerate the autonomous section of their business, which is what investors should be looking for in my opinion. In addition to this, they've also purchased a majority holding in Torque Robotics self-driving company. 
which to me shows their dedication to autonomous driving in my opinion. However, rather than consumer vehicles, this company will be mainly focused on the Daimler Trucks division, which is still an important part of the business. National Grid PLC The Labour Party have confirmed their renationalisation plan should they get into power, which led National Grid's share price to drop 3% in one day and has trended downwards since then. I was up on this one by quite a lot until this news broke. I don't want to get into political opinion particularly, I think it's better to deal with the situation when it arrives or to prepare for eventualities. Obviously if Labour were to get in, it wouldn't be a good move for national grid investors, but we can deal with that problem if or when it arrives. I still like national grid a lot and the fear of renationalisation could create even better buying opportunities in the future. Las Vegas Sands Las Vegas Sands beat its earnings and sales estimates. One of the biggest reasons was because of the Macau part of its business operations. The company paid a quarterly dividend of 77 cents a share and repurchased $174 million worth of stock during the quarter. The company announced its next quarterly dividend of 77 cents will be paid on the 27th of June to shareholders of record as of June 19. Some exciting news is that Las Vegas Sands is also planning to expand its operations in Singapore in exchange for the government allowing them to keep their duopoly along with Genting until 2031. Sands will build a 15,000 seat arena, a 1,000 suite luxury hotel tower and additional meeting space at its Marina Bay Sands property. It will also receive the right to an additional 1,000 gaming machines on the casino floor. This is a big improvement. It feels good to be a Las Vegas Sands shareholder right now. General Mills When I bought this company, I was split between two quite similar companies, General Mills and Kraft Heinz. I thought they both had good things to offer investors and decent sized yields, but saw something I didn't quite like with Kraft Heinz in that I noticed that some insiders from the Brazilian 3G Holdings investment company were selling their shares. That information, although it wasn't particularly big, it put me off and I decided to go with General Mills. It's very lucky for me, as the trajectory of these two companies has been completely different since that point. General Mills beat its earnings guidance by a large margin and has been rising pretty much since then. It's actually risen so much that I wouldn't recommend buying it at the moment, or at least it doesn't fit the dividend experiment guidelines anymore. So I will simply hold and not consider adding any more to my position. It hasn't reached a point where I would sell, but certainly won't be adding any more to my position at this price point. Imperial Brands The company believes it's on track to meet revenue estimates, which is a good sign as tobacco is considered a dying industry. There is still a concern over vaping use in teenagers. However, this threat and government's potential clampdown on their use it's not a new concern and I was aware of it when I bought the company. Imperial Brands is also affected by the Brexit turmoil and the share price has reflected that too. The company as a whole has fallen since I bought, so I may in fact end up buying more of it and averaging down on it if it continues to fall. I'll decide if and when it gets to that point though, so no guarantees yet. Royal Dutch Shell In the last video I posted some information about the two share types RDS.A and RDS.B. The government of the Netherlands was planning on getting rid of or scrapping the Dutch withholding tax, meaning there would be minimal differences between the two share types and you could get a slightly better deal by buying the Dutch RDSA. The reason they were considering scrapping the withholding tax was to persuade Anglo-Dutch companies such as Unilever to consolidate their headquarters in the Netherlands. Unilever actually decided not to do it and the government decided to keep the tax in place. Therefore, for us UK investors, I believe that RDSB is the better choice. International paper. The demand for cardboard boxes has stagnated a little recently and this has caused the dip in the international paper share price. This was a long-term stock pick, however, so I can accept that the current loss on the shares and I'll continue to hold until the business faces some dramatic change. I think it will come back up. TUI Group Holding TUI Group shares has been a roller coaster. The share price has been down by double digit percentages 
So my concern about catching a falling knife when I bought this one seems to be warranted. It's all okay now though, as I'm hovering back to around zero. What does suck is that it's a yearly payer and I bought shortly after the year's dividend payment. So I won't be seeing a return from this one for quite a while. Another point to inform you of is that TUI have decided to go ahead with their orders of the troubled Boeing 737 Maxes, which is a decision I'm not fully sold on myself. I'll be very interested in your thoughts on whether keeping the Boeing 737 Maxes is a good idea or will lead to problems down the road. The Chinese travel company Ctrip is looking to expand outside its domestic Chinese market and one of the international partnerships they're looking to incorporate into their growth strategy is TUI Group. Chinese tourism is a massive industry, yet Chinese consumers prefer to use their own country's platforms. So this strategic partnership could be a good way for TUI to tap into this potential gold mine. Living in China, I've used Ctrip before, and I believe it's a good platform that can complement TUI's business model well. So I'm excited to see how this cooperation will unfold. BAE Systems PLC If you remember the video I made about BAE Systems when I bought it, one of the biggest threats was Germany blocking exports to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in the aftermath of the Khashoggi murder. BAE Systems has a massively important order of Typhoon jets with Saudi Arabia, so having this order blocked by Germany could lead to big problems. German Chancellor Angela Merkel is closer to bowing to pressure from her European colleagues on this, with only the German Social Democrats wanting to stick with the export freeze. I think my predictions are closer to coming true, and that Germany will drop this ban. PacWest Bancorp I've only just bought this one, so I'll give it some time before making any judgments right now. I certainly haven't sold it yet. Now, we've done a summary of the stocks so far, we can take a look at how the market has reacted to them and see what prices they're currently trading at. Are they up or are they down right now? So how are they all doing since I bought them? As we saw in the last update, most of these stocks were not doing so well. If we check again now, we can see that they're still not doing amazing, but I feel like they could have been doing a lot worse. But let's take a deeper look at the percentages. Okay, I'll load up the portfolio. I'll put them in order of percentages so it's easier to view and we'll go through them all together. Last time only AT&T was in the positive percentages, so as we look now we can see a world of difference. Only 3 of the 12 stocks are in the negatives, so it's a much better picture than the last update, for sure. The ones in the negative returns are Daimler, International Paper and Imperial Brands. Daimler has risen a lot recently, as it used to be one of the worst performing stocks in the last two updates. So being only 1.5% down now, it's actually doing better than I expected. I missed time buying this one, and I can accept this. The dividend payment will be paid next month though. This is a big problem with annual payers, in that the stock price has essentially barely moved, and I could have just bought now at a lower price than I bought originally, and I'll still get the dividend as long as I buy before the 23rd of May. Next up from the loser section is international paper. I honestly thought this would be doing better by now, and as mentioned before, the reason for the drop has been the lack of demand for cardboard boxes. If this dipped a little more, I'll be more than happy to buy more. So I'm going to keep, a, keep an eye on this one. And Daimler has been dethroned as my biggest loser and been replaced by Imperial Brands. If Imperial Brands drops any further, potentially 10% below the original purchase price, and assuming I have the money, I'd buy more of this one, as it's a reliable and regular dividend payer and the yield is only growing as the price drops further. Okay, let's move on to the happier news, the stocks that are in the positive returns now. We'll start with General Mills. General Mills is up a relatively big 15.5%. I say relatively big as this is a dividend company and has been paying out dividends on top of its stock price appreciation. It beat its earnings guidance by a significant amount and went on to exceed my expectations by a lot. I'm still grateful for my instincts for going with this one instead of Kraft Heinz. The next biggest gain is Las Vegas Sands. This is good news for me, but it's up by over 10%, as this one is the highest weighting in the whole portfolio. If it goes up, it makes the whole portfolio go up by a bigger proportion. It also validates my decision 
to double down on the company. Looking forward to seeing the news about the Japan licenses and seeing if it can grow even more. Barrett Development is up by over 5%, which I'm surprised about as its price has been affected by Brexit. And I wouldn't say there was that much good news on that front. Once Brexit is resolved, it can be free to react to market conditions and macroeconomics. For now, we just have to wait. It is a good dividend payer, and another payment is due soon, so 5.71% increase is pretty good. Shell is doing well for fairly high yielder. I'll continue to see how it performs whilst remaining satisfied at the income I receive from this one. I've held AT&T for almost a full year now, so with that in mind, a roughly 4% increase isn't very good. But that doesn't take into account the full 6% yield that's been paid out, which makes its performance considerably better. BAE, PacWest and TUI are just on the threshold of being in the positives, so it could well be the case that they have dipped down by the time you watch this video. Look out for these ones on the next video update to give them a real chance to perform. Last but not least is National Grid, which had actually been performing much better until the threat of a Jeremy Corbyn Labour government came back to the forefront of political discussion. Renationalisation is a threat to National Grid, so it's understandable why its increase retreated. I'm not worried about that, but I am cautious in regards to buying more of this one. What do you think about the performances of these stocks after one year? Are any surprising to you? I'll be interested to know, so make sure to leave a comment. The fact that a lot of the company's stocks are in the positive gains is good. But it's not the true purpose of the portfolio. The true purpose is the dividend payments. So let's take a look at how much has been paid out this quarter. So in the last video, we had already seen the national grid payment in January of £24.12. So let's go through the new dividend payments since then. In February, I received two payments. AT&T of £16.42 and General Mills of £9.47. So February wasn't a massive payout month, but it's still nice to get £25.89 in completely passive income. March was a much bigger paying month with a total of 76.79. I got a payment of £9.54 from International Paper, £16.17 from Royal Dutch Shell, £24.90 from Las Vegas Sands, and £26.18 from Imperial Brands. It was a big total, but it still isn't the highest paying month so far. Therefore, November 2018 is still the month to beat. Last time we saw the average monthly dividend was about £15 a month, and that meant that I could pay for a cheap mobile phone contract just from passive income. So let's check out how much money I'll get passively from my portfolio at the current rates. It looks like the average for 2019 so far is just over £30. This is a significant improvement on last time, so let's hope that continues to grow. To put some perspective on it, I can now buy a super fast fibre broadband package from BT with this level of passive income, which is great. Just to be clear, I don't recommend BT. I don't use it, or even live in the UK for most of the time right now. It's the first one I found at this price point. So don't blame me if it sucks. We can also see that the total payout for 2019 so far is £126. If we add up every payment for the dividend experiment so far, we can get to £292. The convenient thing is that the dividend experiment aligns with the tax year in the UK, so I can just select this tab here. 2019-2020 will be an even better tax year as I haven't even received payments from some companies yet. Okay, now I am wary of making this video too long as the animation software can take a while to render and I have to leave my computer running whilst it's doing it. So it can lead to some problems as I need the laptop for work. I know I promised I'd compare the portfolio so far to the S&P and I'm not making any excuses, I definitely will. But I'm gonna make a new video for that specifically. Please don't think I'm chickening out, it will be soon. In addition to this, I'm curious if you want a deeper breakdown of the portfolio with weightings in sectors and other information like that. I can make a video about that too. Hargreaves Lansdowne gives a full portfolio analysis, so I can upload a video about that, no problem. 
It's just mostly stats, so although it's interesting to me, it's my portfolio, I wasn't sure if anyone else wanted to see it. So let's see if we can get, let's say, 25 likes on this video, and I'll upload the portfolio analysis. There are over 70 likes on the 9 month video, so 25 shouldn't be too hard if you guys really want to see it. So just to clarify, the next 3 videos will be the comparison against popular benchmarks and your first view of my homemade Excel spreadsheet. The optional portfolio analysis video, assuming we get 25 likes on this one. And the 500 subscribers thank you video and the future of the channel. If you think that the dividend experiment is interesting, then please feel free to subscribe. I'm also curious about your take on the experiment portfolio so far. Would you have done anything differently? If you would, then leave a comment. If you want to see the portfolio analysis video, then leave a like. If you feel betrayed that I didn't put the benchmarks in this video, and you wanted it in this one, then I guess you could leave a dislike, but it's a bit mean. As always, thanks for watching, I do appreciate it. And I hope to see you on the next video. See ya.